when the people and resources are geographically distributed, uh, how do I go about actually uh, taking some of the decisions uh, which one has to deal with. In fact, I have my own experience of uh, participating in one such situation uh, which I have already put it as one of the research papers. Uh, I am going to speak about that little later, uh, but uh, when it comes to use of uh, basically collaborating when the resources and people are geographically distributed, the available CAD CAM tools are not enough okay. and uh, one has to look for uh, other tools which are necessarily required. Like we already discussed about uh, tools like uh, visualization tools, VRML is one of the very potential tools uh, because of uh, its standard, because it is already a standard and its availability freely uh, since most of the VRML browsers are available, it does not cost you to actually uh, standardize the actual visualization practices on VRML. Uh, there are also other standards now which are uh, linked to VRML like one of the uh, standards for product data exchange is STEP and uh, translators are available. Suppose if I have all my geometric models available as IGES or a STEP, I can always translate them into a VRML because these translators are also available free of cost. There are new add-ons which are coming on VRML where if I am interacting with one of the uh, VRML models, suppose if I am an interacting session where I am actually dealing with one of the VRML models and if there are four or five other people who are situated geographically distributed and would like to see these modifications online, it is also possible. So, you have the new VRML interactive tools which are coming where I can modify a VRML uh, model. That means, suppose if I am in a design situation, I modify the design, but I would like to see that this design be, this modification be seen and be critiqued by the people who are geographically distributed. It is quite possible, you have tools where uh, you can do and standardize over uh, uh, tools like VRML and uh, collaborative tools like audio, video and data are necessary and uh, they are existent already. Uh, I happened to do a survey before we actually uh, started with uh, uh, selecting a particular tool for this. This was sometime in the middle of 1996 what kind of tools which we have where uh, people who are sitting geographically distributed and would like to exchange audio, video and data, uh, what kind of tools are really available and uh, I am really surprised uh, with the kind of uh, this thing. In the middle of 96, there were something of the order of 40 to 50 tools, most of them free of cost, available where people who are geographically distributed can exchange the audio, video and data. And uh, we had, uh, we evaluated these systems in order to use this particular thing. There were some limitations, particularly the limitations in terms of uh, hardware, okay. Some work only on let us say PC based systems, some work on only Sun workstations. But there were some which uh, had, uh, which were compatible with uh, multiple platforms because in one of the collaborations, experiments which we did. We wanted a collaboration tool uh, where the audio, video and data can be exchanged which has to work on four different hardware platforms. One is uh, Sun because the, some of the uh, design and manufacturing people use Sun as uh, their uh, system. Some people use silicon graphics, the Windows was the other and fourth was Mac. So, a system which was compatible with this uh, was at that time was somewhat difficult to look, but now it is available. You, we have many systems which can work on which are platform independent and uh, others and uh, we, we have chosen in fact not one tool, a couple of tools which uh, at that particular time in order to do this kind of a collaboration. Like uh, one of the tools which was uh, used at a very preliminary stages is called as a cool talk. I do not know if some of you have used a cool talk. Uh, it is a free software which can be downloaded. If uh, you have computers which are networked together and if you are using whatever I sketch or whatever I speak or whatever data I transmit or whatever application I open can be exchanged or it can be seen on the other system once you are in a collaboration. 
the only problem which uh, at that time which one of the things which was faced is related to the bandwidth okay. uh, since this was primarily internet driven uh, the manufacturing applications which can be directly plugged to one of your browsers and then you are going to play them so that others can also see this particular thing. So, there are two things which are involved one is the application should be compatible with web and secondly the other should be able to share this particular thing once you are in a collaboration. If I am using one of the collaborative uh, tools for this thing, suppose if I use one of the manufacturing, suppose if I am, in, I am designing a jig uh, for one of the applications and I use an application which is like plug and play uh, and uh, which can be easily plugged to my internet explorer brow browser and if I do that others should be able to see and critique or should be able to give a comments on this particular thing and these tools are also available. Uh, to use and uh, we did make use of some of these manufacturing applications plug and play uh, this thing. Like an example of plug and play could be like if uh, you have many of the quick time movies etcetera uh, which suppose if I want to animate and uh, I can always have a, a plug-in uh, which can uh, show me a quick time movie uh, in animation and uh, one can look at. So, that is an example, but there are more uh, manufacturing applications which are also coming and uh, which are also uh, of going to be of uh, uh, plug and play. And uh, if one wants to use a distributed uh, tools in the long run, one also requires some kind of uh, a architecture, okay, a communication architecture uh, this thing. And uh, there was some evaluation which was done and uh, one of the tools then which was uh, prominent and uh, which we evaluated uh, is called as CORBA. I think uh, some of you may have heard about this. Uh, CORBA basically stands for Common Object Request Broker Architecture and uh, it provides a some kind of a standard and uh, a communication uh, infrastructure framework. Uh, which can be used to link some of the components and also if I want to transfer an application from one particular system to another particular system, uh, this kind of architectures are uh, already available and they can be made use of. There is a uh, one more uh, issue which comes uh, particularly in a manufacturing system scenario is uh, related to the agents. Uh, in many of the situations, suppose if I take an example of a shop floor control where the situation is highly dynamic, uh, a decision which has to be taken based on the, uh, there is a certain randomness in the data and there is, uh, uh, there is a change is continuously happening. In the midst of a change and the randomness, uh, there should be the decision should be taken as quickly as possible. Now, if the decision making, if the decision is actually done by a person, that person has to be actually always alert to look at the dynamic changes and to incorporate some of these changes in terms of production scenarios. Now, increasingly some of these human function, functions which are done by primarily human beings are now being replaced by a programs which mimic. Uh, basically a decision making process more like a human being and you call them as a intelligent agents and this is more so uh, in a situation where which is highly dynamic and intelligent agents are uh, it is it's nothing new uh, most of the people use not only in the manufacturing scenario in most of the web based application. What we discussed earlier is mainly related to where you exchange the information basically in terms of audio video data or uh, an application. But uh, one more issue which also comes is uh, there are situations where sitting at a far off place I may have to take a control of an equipment or a process which is happening uh, thousands of miles away from the place where I am. Number of tools have evolved and uh, there are working examples which can be used for telecontrol. Just to give an example uh, in the in year uh, couple of years back I met a chemist who does lot of experimentation with uh, microscopes, okay, uh, scanning electron microscope and others. And uh, he is an extensively busy person and uh, he would like to carry out the experiment experiments even when he is on travel. Okay. 
So, he devised a, a very simple system where using some Java driven applets and uh, codes, he could always load a sample on uh, sample which he wants to actually uh, get an image uh, into microscope sitting far off from his laboratory and this entire thing is uh, driven by Java. You can load a sample, the whatever is the microstructure figure it is taken, it is sent as a TIFF for uh, image and he can look at this particular thing, evaluate and he can also decide what is the next experimentation to be done. And the entire control was Java driven and this was experimented and such systems are also uh, available. For example, telerobotics is uh, uh, one of the exam examples where uh, I would like to control a particular uh, robotic operation sitting far off. It can be done through a dedicated system, but it can also be now done through web if I have uh, a proper uh, interfaces and the programs uh, which can be driven by uh, things like uh, a Java. And one more example of uh, another uh, very interesting thing which is happening, uh, in fact it is coming in a big way related to telecontrol is what is called as tele maintenance. Now suppose if I have uh, a uh, equipment or infrastructure which is expensive and uh, it breaks down, you have to call a maintenance pers person to basically put it in order and uh, often the maintenance persons cannot reach in 24 hours or they may take more than that. There is a system which is uh, uh, devised where you can the person who is actually a maintenance engineer can communicate with you and also have uh, a visual feedback and go through a troubleshooting chart in order to put it in order or he can, he can, he can even have uh, a complete uh, control of the machine tool sitting geographically distributed and do the maintenance. This is, uh, this is one of the things which is proposed for uh, some of the equipment where the downtime has to be low and uh, the equipment is expensive and uh, this is one of the uh, things which is already uh, available. Uh, some of the product manufacturers also uh, like uh, whenever you buy a one of the household products, many a times you have to do assembly yourself, okay. The actual uh, pack comes as loose components and you have to do the assembly. Usually you have assembly diagram which is given to given with the pack which you follow. Many times the assembly sequence is so complex that this diagram cannot explain. One of the commercial goods manufacturer gives a site where you can go and see the assembly animation in VRML so that it facilitates you to assemble the product. Uh, particularly this is coming for the toys industry where uh, you have to do an assembly and you look at the site and see what is the assembly sequence which is happening. Uh, you can see a VRML simulation and then you assemble rather than looking at a static picture uh, which may not probably give a complete information.